Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the principles of electron microscopy. You should then be able to describe the advantages and disadvantages of electron microscopy. And finally, you should be able to compare transmission electron microscopy with scanning electron microscopy. In the last couple of videos, we've been looking at light microscopy. The benefit of light microscopy is that you can visualize living cells. This allows you to see movement, for example, chromosomes moving during mitosis. The disadvantage of light microscopy is poor resolution. Remember that resolution is the minimum distance between two objects, while they can still be seen as two separate objects. The maximum resolution of a conventional light microscope is around 200 nanometers. In the last video, we saw that laser scanning confocal microscopes have a higher resolution than conventional light microscopes. These microscopes work by using a laser to only visualize a very narrow region of the sample. By using special dyes, we can visualize the movement of specific proteins or parts of the cell. However, as we said, the resolution of any light microscope will be limited by the wavelength of light, and that includes laser scanning confocal microscopes. Now, to solve this problem, scientists invented the electron microscope. This uses electrons instead of light. Electrons have a very short wavelength, so the resolution is 2,000 times better than a light microscope. Now, students sometimes ask how a particle, such as an electron, can have a wavelength. Well, the answer is that electrons have properties of both particles and waves, so they can have a wavelength. Let's look at how electron microscopes work. We start with an electron gun, which is producing a beam of electrons. These electrons pass down the microscope. The inside of an electron microscope contains a vacuum, so the electrons can pass through without bouncing off the molecules in air. Remember that electrons are negatively charged. This means that we can focus the electron beam by using electromagnets, and we call these electromagnetic lenses. The specimen is placed in the path of the electron beam. Electrons can pass through some parts of the specimen more easily than other parts, and the final image is produced on a fluorescent screen. Now, the electron microscope has one big advantage over light microscopes, and that's resolution. The resolution of an electron microscope is around 2,000 times better than a light microscope. With an electron microscope, we can resolve up to 0.1 nanometers under good conditions. This means that we can achieve a far greater level of magnification before the image becomes blurred. Because of this higher resolution, the electron microscope has been used to make some major discoveries in biology, including ribosomes and the structure of the cell membrane. There are some disadvantages to electron microscopes. We've already said that the interior of an electron microscope is a vacuum. This means that we cannot view living specimens using an electron microscope. The second disadvantage is that electron microscopy requires very careful staining of the specimen, and the specimen often has to be very thin. And finally, with electron microscopy, we can get artifacts. Artifacts are false images created by the staining process or the conditions inside the electron microscope. Biologists have to be careful to check that what they're seeing with an electron microscope is actually real, and not created by the conditions in the microscope or by the stain. Now, there are actually two different types of electron microscopes. These are called transmission electron microscopes and scanning electron microscopes, and you should be able to compare them. The example I'm showing you here is the transmission electron microscope. In a transmission electron microscope, the electron beam passes through the specimen. The transmission electron microscope produces flat two-dimensional images, and only works if the specimen is very thinly sliced. However, the transmission electron microscope does have a very high resolution. This shows a scanning electron microscope. In this microscope, the electron beam does not pass through the specimen. Instead, electrons are scattered from the surface of the specimen and detected. The scanning electron microscope produces three-dimensional images and does not require the specimen to be thinly sliced. However, the scanning electron microscope has a lower resolution than the transmission electron microscope. The scanning electron microscope also requires that the specimen is coated with a metal such as gold, and this can lead to artifacts. 
Okay, so hopefully now you can describe electron microscopy.